All right, everybody, welcome back. And now this is time. It's time for my Warrior review of cards from Ashes of Outland. So if we take a look at Warrior and what they have through uh, what they've had beforehand, we go to Rise of Shadows. They didn't really have all that much except Omega Devastator, and that was an epic. So there really wasn't much there. So they had a pretty poor Rise of Shadows set. We go to Saviors of Old Doom. And what did they have here? They had oh, Restless Mummy was really good. Lance is really good. Flunky was really good. Tomb Board, uh, Armored Goon was good for health. Tomb Board, and if you could buff it, was a really good card. So they had a good Saviors of Old Doom. Descent of Dragons, it gave um, Sky Raider Quartermaster. So like solid cards. Nothing like truly exceptional that they got. I forget what they got for Galakron's Awakening. Oh, yeah, Bomb Wrangler and Boom Squad were like really powerful cards from there. So they got good cards, but they didn't have like the most exceptional cards. And Warrior really needs exceptional cards, and they need exceptional synergy. They need something like a Dragon Roar in a heavily uh, in a set that encourages people to play really, really, really slow. And honestly, they did not really get that this one. Now that's not that they didn't get they didn't get good cards. They got great cards. They got a couple really powerful cards, but they didn't get enough that kind of pushes them past that point that pushes them over the top to compensate for their weakness it's like going over to cards all right and why is it not mana it was mana that i clicked away and it wasn't mana all right we'll start here imprisoned ganar ganark 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 imprisoned ganark dormant for two turns when it's equipped awakens equip a three two axe so one mana two two you play this on one you get a two drop. You get a, a war axe on three for zero mana, and you have a two two on the board. So yeah, obviously really powerful effect played on one four star card. Like the one problem with this card, and the reason I'm not rating it a lot higher, is that number one, if your opponent knows you're going to have a weapon, they're not going to play into that weapon. Number two, in the mid to late game, like weapons are removals that you don't want to play unless you have something, like unless you have a reason to play them. Because you might have to overwrite the weapon, or you might have a weapon that you don't want to get overwritten, and then that makes this a dead card. So, good card, four stars, but not the greatest card in the world. Sword of Board, deal two damage to a minion, gain two armor. Uh, it's Claw that can go through taunts, that's three star card, nothing more to say. Corsair Cast, draw a weapon, give it plus one, plus one. So, there's a lot of powerful weapons. And <clears throat> giving them plus one plus one is more than worth like the cycle to get it out. But I compare this to like uh, what's the card? Forge of Souls. Forge of Souls drew two weapons, and the problem with that is that when you play one weapon, that other weapon becomes a dead card. And so this is this is kind of a minor problem here. You give a weapon plus one plus one. If you have one weapon in your deck, that's insane. If you have two weapons in your deck, that's okay. That's, that's really good. If you have three, it's okay. If you have four, like the more weapons you have, the worse this effect becomes because this effect basically means your weapons are dead cards until you get rid of all the charges. So it has kind of similar problems with Forge of Souls where you're going to draw a really powerful weapon, but then you're going to make all your weapons uh, up, up useless until you get rid of it. So... It's a, it's a decent, it's still good. It's still three stars, a three star card. But it's not going to be as great. As, it's not going to be as great as it looks or as it feels. Blade Storm. Deal one damage to all minions. Repeat until one dies. Okay, I'm not sold on this card. I'm going to say why. So, if you have a single minion on the board, then this basically becomes a deadly shot. Or it's a deadly shot that damages everything else, which is fine. The problem is, is that boards are weird and boards generally have a lot of stuff with like one or two health on the board. And so if this is a whirlwind or if this is a volcanic potion, is this really all that great? And I think on average, probably no. So I think it's only a three star card. I think there are gonna be a lot of situations where this effect is gonna be a lot more awkward than you would anticipate it being. Bone Chewer Raider, Battle Cry, if there's a damaged minion, gain plus one, plus one in Rush. This is probably not going to happen much on three, 
but it's going to happen a lot in the, in the mid to late game. So I think uh, this is a four star card, low four star level card. I mean, a uh, damaged minion happens all the time. So mid game to late game, a four four rush is really good. But again, the problem is turn three, it's going to be a three mana three three most of the time. And for many cards, their value is based on what can they do on curve, not what can they do when I have to patch together something for curve. Bulwark of Azanoff. Whenever your hero would take damage, this loses one durability instead. Let's say, in theory, each time you take, you would block three damage four times. If you were to do that, that would be three mana heal for 12, and that would be pretty mediocre. So, yeah, this is a one star card just because it, it's healing and it's not really good healing, and it's not something you can use until like very, very specifically late in the game. It's like Ice Block and Healing Touch together, and nah. Warmount Challenger or Battlecry, choose an enemy minion, battle it to the death, which means you get to keep on attacking it. This is a borderline four-star card, like right between three and four. So the reason is the 110 stat line. And I know it looks bad. I know it looks bad, but hear me out on this. If you play this against the Scarlet Crusader, you kill the Scarlet Crusader, and then you have a 1-4 on board. So you kill 3-drop or 3-drop, you kill their 3-drop, and you put a basically 2-mana card on the board. And that's a 5-mana swing, and that's really good. Same thing. You can play this on any 2-drops, and you'll kill the 2-drop, and this will be on the board. Uh, there's a lot of cheap stuff on the board that you can kill the cheap thing and then have a giant, like, not healthy creature, or not like a threat but something on the board. So it pretty much trades evenly with all three drops. It will destroy two drops and leave something on the board. And for that, that's a good card. And as I said, that's a borderline four star card. Like it's mediocre in the late game when you have big minions and this just dies. But for curve, this is a really good card. Cargath Blade Fist. Why did it Oh, I thought Bulwark of that. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I thought Bulwark of Asnoff was, was a 4-mana card. Like, even for a 3-mana card, though. All right. Uh, Kargath Blade Fist. 4-mana, uh, 4-4 four, four Rush, Death Rattle, Sharp, Shovel, Kargath Prime, 2 Deck. 4-4 four, four Rush, that's basically Core Cron core, core Elite, 4-3 Charge. Kargath Prime. Uh, rush, whenever this attacks and kills minion, gain 10 armor. So, insane amount of healing, insane card. It's a core corner with a few points added on. That'd be a high four star level card. Core corner is like a high three levels, high three star card. <clears throat> Scrap golem, taunt, death rattle, gain armor equal to this minion's attack. This was a fester root. Let's see, fester root. I'm oh, sorry, rotten apple bomb. Rotten apple bomb effect where taunt, death rattle, gain four health. Instead, it's gain four armor, and it can be buffed. So a little bit better than the Ample Bomb, that would put it at a 3-star card. Finally here, Blood Boil Brood. 7-mana, uh, 6-8, Rush, cost 1 for each, each, one less for each damage minion. So let's start here. 7-mana, six, 6-8, seven Rush. Compare that to a Money War Bear. A Money War Bear is a 5-7 Taunt with Rush, and that was a premium card. This doesn't have the Taunt, but it has plus 1, plus 1 in stats. And if it has that stat boost, that's that should be equivalent to the Taunt. Right? So, an Amani War Bear was a high four star card. And this gets discounted for something that's very easy to happen. Like, if you have any whirlwind effect, you can just get this out for extremely cheap. Like, you can, pro you can probably get two or three damaged minions out on the board on a semi reliable basis once you hit them in the late game. So, yeah, this is a five star card. This is like a really powerful card. Like, it's not going to uh break the game but it's a really strong card for its mana cost all right that's it for warrior and the last set the last video i'm going to be doing is the neutral cards which again these cards are what i would say the strongest neutral set not like the high power level but in terms of overall average power level that we have seen in the history of hearthstone and from my calculations the highest number of good to great cards that we have seen in the history of Hearthstone. So I'll see you guys for that last video and see you then.